Movies based off of video games get a deservedly bad rap. They're not inherently well made, save for a handful of examples, and that's largely due because they're usually greenlit by out-of-touch executives who know nothing about what makes a game or a series beloved by fans. They just know that there's money to be made, and to them, they require little other motivation to putting an adaptation into pre-production. Welcome to Raccoon City isn't entirely different because it's a lot of fan service and obvious references to give even the most entry-level fan a chance to point the screen and go, hey, I recognize that, while simultaneously giving diehard fans who know the plot points, story beats, lore, and games inside out a chance to roll their eyes in their seats. There seems to be very little middle ground when it comes to video game films. Either there's not enough for fans because they're leaving too many pieces out, or there's too much squeezed in, and Welcome to Raccoon City is kind of the latter. When juggling two different plots happening simultaneously, it very rarely equates to anything other than mishandling, especially when trying to push it all into a movie less than two hours in length. Essentially, the plot boils down to the first two Resident Evil games taking place at the same time. Side A has the Stars unit exploring the Spencer Mansion, which was the basis for the first game, and Side B has Claire and Leon entering Raccoon City, which would be the plot for Resident Evil 2. However, a lot of elements to the individual plots have been altered because they're happening at the same time. So if you're a fan, be prepared to be a little confused and annoyed. From here on out, there will be spoilers for the film. However, if you've yet to play the games that have been out since, like, 1998, then I don't know what to tell you. They've been available on all major consoles for the last two decades, so that's on you. From a narrative perspective, it looks like the elements were moved around. Much like pieces that belong to the board board game Clue. Instead of Claire meeting Leon at the gas station, she's been given a ride from the truck driver. Leon isn't arriving at Raccoon City PD for his first shift. He's actually already hanging out with the Stars members, which doesn't make sense because if you've played the games, Leon doesn't meet any of those characters until much later. Specifically Chris, whom he meets in Code Veronica. Welcome to Raccoon City attempts to retcon a bunch of canon in order for its own plot to work, but that's what fanfiction is for. Already accepted lore should be followed. It's not the series with Mila Jovich that's already got its own story taking place in the RE universe, following new characters. This is a pre-established story with a setting, locations, characters, and villains that fans are already aware of, so shuffling things would be lazy. Writer and director Johannes Roberts, to me, did a disservice to the main characters. Firstly, Jill Valentine has very little attention given to her in the film, despite being one of two playable characters in the original game. Jill is such an excellent character, and she's not given her proper representation. Lisa Trevor isn't a terrifying monster that lurks under the Spencer Mansion in the Arclay Mountains, but instead, she's friendly, and she assists Claire and Leon in the orphanage, which both characters she never meets, and it's a location she never visits, Leon is made out to be a bumbling idiotic fool who gets his gun taken away from him by a guy who's locked in a jail cell. Roberts made Leon encapsulate the term rookie in every sense of the word. It's embarrassing to see a once competent and headstrong character turn into fucking Mr. Magoo. I think the aspect that irks me the most out of this entire film is the fact that Roberts removed Barry Burton entirely from the film, and I don't see a justifiable reason as to why that is. You can't tell me you couldn't find a guy to cast because Daniel Fathers is right fucking there. You removed both Barry Burton and Rebecca Chambers, but you gave Brad Vickers and Richard Aiken a supporting role in the film? Are you kidding? I don't know. I don't know. That's just something that just doesn't make much sense to me. It's like the screenplay is waylaid by boobery. So many oddball design choices that just doesn't sit right with me because the story has been largely unchanged for 24 years? It feels like someone swapped around pieces on a board game and now characters over here and this monster's over there and more than twice I said, what? out loud during the runtime. It's become Resident Evil Mad Libs. One of the most unsuspecting moments in the film is when Lisa Trevor becomes an unlikely ally, the most tragic character in the entire Resident Evil franchise, and she almost decapitates a liquor in the Raccoon City Orphanage. I mentioned earlier it's not plausible for Lisa to be here because 
she's imprisoned under the Spencer Mansion, but again, creative liberty and all, but it feels now less of a film and just fan fiction. It's a booklet filled out by a 14-year-old with a basic understanding, a rudimentary understanding of the series. Welcome to Raccoon City does boil down to dumb fun once it reaches its third act with the stars team finally entering the Spencer Mansion, but only after an hour of scenes filled with fan service and too much creative freedom. It tries to bring back much of the needed horror to the series after those six octane field roller coaster rides we've been treated to thus far. I appreciate that it doesn't come out of the gate swinging, but so much of this is on the nose and it needed to be toned back. So much like how Capcom started again with Resident Evil 7, this too points to the right direction, but it isn't entirely what fans deserve. I'll most likely watch it again in the future and maybe even one day own it on my shelf, especially since I own the other ones. Not that they're even good past the third one, but I digress. It breaks no new ground and it doesn't do much for an argument in the favor of video game films, but at the same time, it's still fun.